This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create these vector gauge icons using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll minimize this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set our view to custom, and then we'll zoom in at 100%. Then we'll open up the Align and Distribute menu uh, with this button right here. Make sure you have last selected chosen from that drop down, and then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with this button right here. So the first thing we're going to do in Inkscape is create a circle. So let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool, and we'll come over to the canvas and hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And once you've done that, uh, we can go back to our, we can go to our select tool, and we're going to make the width and the height of this 335 by 335. Uh, let's actually turn the lock icon on, which will keep the perspective. So once you've done that, come over to the W column right here and let's uh, highlight whatever's in there and then just type in 335 and then hit enter. And then we can take the opacity of this and drop this down about in half. And then we're gonna take this circle right here, but then we're gonna right click it and go to duplicate and we'll turn that red and we'll lower it one step with this button right here lower selection one step so that it goes behind the red, the, uh, the black circle and I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and uh, grab this top right arrow and click and drag to scale this out until the width of it is around uh, maybe maybe around 400 pixels and you can see what the width is up here in this box while you're scaling it so let me do that again. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to click and drag this out and watch how the width changes in this box up here. I'm going to get that till it's about 400. It doesn't have to be exactly 400. 401, that, that works too. And once you get that out to there, I'm just going to take this, this uh, arrow on the right over here and just pull this out until that reaches about maybe 440, like that. And then we could take this black circle in the middle we could right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red object and go to path difference and then we could take this black circle right here hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to scale this in about that much and what we'll do next is let's go to our rectangles tool and click on that and let's just click and drag and create a thin rectangle going over the center of that black circle in the middle right there like that about that high. You want this thing to be really uh, tall um, vertically. You want this to be taller than the entire graphic like that. Now we'll go back to our select tool. We'll turn this lock icon off and change the width of this. Whatever this is right here, just erase that and type in 8.5 and hit enter. And then hold shift in the keyboard. Actually, let's turn this blue first so we can differentiate it from the other red object. Turn that blue and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black circle so we have them both selected and we're going to center them on the horizontal and vertical axis with these two buttons right here and then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything so let's click on just this uh, blue rectangle now and we're gonna click it a second time to get our rotation handles and then hold control on the keyboard and grab one of these corner handles right here and just click and drag it around like that and you can see what happens it takes it around in a circle we're gonna bring it back to this starting position right here and while holding control the entire time we do this we're just gonna hit the space bar and it's gonna make a copy and I'm gonna bring this over one step and then hit the space bar again and then over hit the space bar again remember we're holding control the entire time we're doing this put that right there and I'm gonna put one right there and that'll be the end point and then I'll come back around and put them on this side as well. Put that there, put that there. And for the last one, we don't have to press space bar. We could just leave it there. We could just let go of everything. And there you have it. Um, so what we're going to do next is hold shift on the keyboard and click on each of these blue rectangles. So we have them all selected like that. And we're going to unify them together by going to Path, Union. And I'm just going to turn them green just so we can see, just so we can make sure that we unify, we grabbed all of them when we unified them. I missed this one right here, but I did that on purpose. I'm actually not going to use this one. I'm going to get rid of that. 
I want this green one to be the ending point of this of this red shape. And once we get there, we'll just click on this green object and then hold shift and click on the red object and go to path difference. And then we'll go to path break apart and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And let's take this big piece right here, click on that and then just press delete on your keyboard to get rid of that. And we're going to do the same thing to these pieces down here. Let's click and drag over those little red pieces and then press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And what we'll do next is we're going to create another rectangle like we just did a second ago. A tall, thin rectangle going through the entire graphic, pretty tall like that. And then we'll go back to our select tool. But this time around, the width of this is not going to be 8.5. It's going to be 4. So just hit 4 and hit enter. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black circle and center that on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to click on the green rectangle, click it a second time to get the rotation handles, hold control and grab one of the corner arrows and rotate it around and press spacebar at every gap to create a copy in each gap. And we're remember we're holding control the entire time we do this. And for the last one, we don't have to press spacebar. We can just leave it there and let go click off of the graphic to deselect everything and then click on this green object to the far left hold shift and go and click on the rest of the green objects so we could select them all and then go to path union and I'm just gonna turn that blue to make sure I selected all of them No, I missed that one I'm just gonna hold shift and click on that one this is you could do this too if you accidentally miss one of those and then just unify it together path Union and now we have them all set right there. So let's take this black circle right here and with that selected Let's just go to edit and Duplicate and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna turn that green first and then I'll hold control and shift in the keyboard and just click and drag this circle out Until it's a little bit smaller than the interior of the red shape. We want some padding in there Maybe about this much like that and then we'll right click this and go to duplicate We'll turn that copy red. And then we'll hold control and shift and scale this in about that much. And then hold shift and click on the green circle so we have them both selected. And go to path difference. And then we can hold shift and click on this these blue uh, spokes here. And go to path intersection. And what we can do now is we have our gauge indicate our, our little increments right here on the top. We don't need them on the bottom, so we're gonna get rid of the bottom part. To do that, we're just gonna grab the Bezier pen. And we're gonna start out here to the left, and click, and we're just gonna draw a, shape, a line going through the center of those, and then come back around the outside, and connect it back to the starting point to create that shape. Let me go back to our Select tool, hold Shift in the keyboard, and click on the blue objects, and go to Path, Difference. And what we could do now is let's click and drag over this entire thing and let's bring the opacity all the way up and let's make this one color just black or maybe 90% gray just for now. And then we'll click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to color in these, um, these uh, progress bars right here. And we're going to use, we're gonna use a, a, a gradient going from blue to green, only we're not going to create an actual gradient in Inkscape. We're going to use individual colors to keep this consistent with a flat sort of design. So uh, let's take this circle right here and then right click that and go to duplicate. And let's put this off to the left. And let's make this the shade of blue that we want the blue side to be. I'm just gonna come down here. I'm going to choose this shade of blue down here. I believe that's 00CCFF. Go ahead and click that. I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then I'll hold control and click and drag this copy all the way off to the right maybe right here and then I'll choose the shade of green that I want that to be maybe um, that shade right there and now that we have our two uh, our two uh, ends of the color spectrum we want to use we have to count how many of these increments are in here so these black stripes right here going around the outside we're going to want to count how many are there is one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so there's nine increments there 
On your screen, it may be different. Just make sure to count it. And whatever that number is, subtract it from two. Subtract two from it. And uh, in my instance, it would be seven. So what we're gonna do now is with that information, I'm gonna click and drag over both of these to select them both and go to extension, generate from path and interpolate. Go to interpolate and I'm gonna set this up with the exponent being zero, interpolation steps being the number of increments you counted here, minus two. So there was nine increments, minus two. There's going to be seven steps. Interpolation method one, Duplicate end paths, yes. Interpolate style, yes. And let's go ahead and click on live preview to see how it looks. And that looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and click apply and then close out of that. And what we're gonna do now is click on each one of these increments and make them the same shade as these down here. So let's click on the first one and we'll grab our dropper tool and click on this blue shade. And then we'll go back to our uh, select tool We'll click on the second one right here and go back to the dropper and click on the second shade. And to make this a little quicker so we don't have to keep clicking on the select tool and the dropper tool over and over, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts. So to get to uh, the select tool, I'm going to press F1 on the keyboard and then click on that shape. And to get to the dropper, I'll press F7 on the keyboard and then go ahead and click on that, the third one in. And then I'm going to keep my fingers over the F1 and F7 key the entire time I'm doing this because it just makes it easier and quicker. I'll press F1 again, go here, F7, make that the same shade as the fourth circle in, F1, click that one, F7, I believe this is the fifth one in, F1, click that one, F7, and that is the sixth circle in. And you get the idea. We're just going to go along the line and fill in each increment with its corresponding circle like that. And once you've gotten to there, we can click and drag over this entire thing and just delete that, press delete on the keyboard and that's, that's gone. And what we did there is we created a gradient without creating an actual gradient. These are all individual colors. It's just giving you the appearance, the illusion of a gradient. So uh, one last final step that we have to do is add the needle to this gauge here. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over to the, uh, the squares and rectangles tool and I'm just going to click and drag. I'm going to start it up to about here. I'm just going to click and drag down like that and make a thin little rectangle going down into that circle right there. Maybe about that much like that. We want this to be thin to start like that. Then we can go to our select tool and hold shift in the keyboard and click on that black circle and center that on the vertical axis and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on this portion right here. You can press plus or minus on your keyboard. I'm just going to hold control and roll upwards on the mouse wheel to zoom in so I can have a better look at this tiny little green rectangle. And what we want to do with this rectangle is we want to make the base of the needle wider than the top of the needle. And a, a nice little shortcut to get that to achieve that would be to first convert this to a path. So let's go to our edit paths by nodes so we can see that this is not a path yet. This is still a square or a rectangle in the eyes of Inkscape. So in order to change that, we're just going to go to path, object to path. And now that's a path with four different nodes that we can manipulate individually. And what we're going to do now is we're going to click over these. We're going to click and drag over those bottom two nodes on the bottom. And up here in the toolbar, there should be a little icon that says show transformation handles for selected nodes. You can go ahead and click on that. And it's going to give you these little handles here that it gives us when we're scaling objects where you could scale these little um, nodes individually. And once you have that, we're going to hold control and shift. And I'm going to grab one of these arrow handles and just scale this out maybe about that much. And let me zoom out and see how that looks. And you see the, we, that's how we achieved that desired effect by making the base wider than the top. So uh, once we've done that, we can go back to the select tool and Let's right click this and go to duplicate and we'll just make this a different color for now. I'm just going to turn that red and I'm going to flip that vertically with this button right here and then hold shift and click on the green shape beneath it. So we have them both selected and we're going to come down to this button over here in the align and distribute panel that says align top edges of objects to the bottom edge of the anchor and go ahead and click on that and then we're going to group them together. Uh, up here with this button, Group Selected Objects. And then we could hold Shift and click on the black circle and make sure we have that centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. 
And then let's ungroup them with this button right here, ungroup selected objects. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything and then grab this little red piece here on the bottom and then just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And what that did is that gave us that the needle, the, the, the end point of the needle being at the center of the circle, which is going to be important for what we do next. So let's click on this green needle and let's click that a second time to get the rotation handles. And we're gonna take this little crosshair in the center. I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard then click and drag that crosshair down until it snaps onto the bottom of the green shape like that. And then I'm going to make this the same shade of black or gray that the uh, circle is. And let's press one on the keyboard to zoom out. And you can see we now have a needle that you can move around relative to its center, relative to the center of that circle in the middle of the gauge. And if you want to have this needle go in exact increments as these lines, you could just hold control and click and drag and it'll take it exactly, it'll be exactly aligned with each inc uh, increment on the grid. So uh, let's say you want to create several of these icons for a website. You want to show varying degrees of whatever it is. We can click and drag over all of this. Right click, duplicate, the hold control and click and drag this off to the right. And uh, click off of this to deselect everything. I'll click that once and then click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'm just going to hold control and rotate this around to the end point. Let me make this a little closer. And we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll right click it, duplicate, bring this over here. Click on that, click it a second time to get the rotation handles, hold control and scale it around to the starting point. And then you could go and export each one of these graphics individually and use them as needed. So that's one way that you can create a vector gauge icon using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.